I have hacked the Airbnb algorithm to get my listings over 95% occupied. My listings are performing 26.9% better than my competition and that is all year round. Whenever you create a new Airbnb listing, you get an automatic one month ranking boost. Yeah, so don't be intimidated. You have plenty of time to put into play what you are learning here on this video so that way you can increase your occupancy too. Airbnb isn't the only website that has an algorithm that matters, so please like this video and ask me something in the comments to help this video perform well so other people can benefit from this video. First, I need to teach you what the Airbnb algorithm is and that way we can hack it. So first thing you need to know about the Airbnb algorithm is it's called an interest algorithm. This is what Airbnb themselves call the algorithm. Now it's not a trending algorithm per se, but it is capable of picking up listings that are trending so that way it can quickly get them up to the top so people book them up and fill their calendars. See, Airbnb's matching system works by essentially trying to find out what guests like and showing them more of what they like because Airbnb's guest experience determines whether or not they retain on the platform. See, Airbnb doesn't just care about whether or not hosts get booked. They want to make sure that the users on the platform have the best experience. So there's word of mouth marketing and there's retention. So Airbnb will silently push to the bottom all the listings that they think aren't really good for their brand, right? You can still get found on map view and you dig deep enough, you can find almost any listing on the platform, but Airbnb at the very front on the first page of search and on their homepage, they want to push all the stuff that looks the best. And so in order for you to hack the algorithm, you need to understand what Airbnb's motives are as a company and start to give them more of what they want. And here's how we can pull it off. So what is the algorithm looking for? There are four main categories we can control out of the hundreds of little things that they look for. There are four main categories that you should be focused on. The first of the four is occupancy. Now, if you're nearly 100% occupied, Airbnb doesn't need to understand why. They just need to know that you are nearly 100% occupied all the time. So they make the assumption that your listing is popular and they will push it more based on occupancy alone. This even is like you could say um, noted in your Airbnb profile. If you stay over 90% occupied down at the bottom below the calendar, it'll say rare find. You know, this listing is very rarely available. So book it now kind of thing. So they put these call to actions in there for you. If you're like tend to be fully occupied. One hack for this that we don't plan on like deep diving in on this video is pricing strategy. If you do good dynamic pricing, you can get near 100% occupancy by changing your prices and Airbnb will go, Hey, cool. You're popular. Number two is views. This is probably the most commonly known one. The more you get clicked on, the more your profile is loaded, the more Airbnb assumes interest, right? You are interested enough in the thumbnail and the title to click on it and that is interest. So Airbnb will bump your ranking up based on clicks. Just total views per month is going to be a number and we're going to teach you how to hack this too. Three is hang time. Once somebody clicks on your listing, how much time are they spending on your listing? This is actually important. It's almost just like the Instagram algorithm where you scroll and you stop on a photo. Instagram, Twitter, all these social media companies know exactly how much time you're spending at a certain point on your phone. So if you're looking at one photo, even though you didn't like it or engage with it, they still know that you liked it because you stopped to look at it for an extended period of time. And Airbnb tracks the same thing. Now we're not going to talk about things like conversion percentage, like how frequently somebody books after they view you. This isn't actually something that we can really quantify. It is a metric, but I think it's a small one. And the reason why is it's pretty darn complex. If your calendar is always full, it's kind of impossible to get booked, right? So your conversion percentage goes down the more you're the calendar gets full. So Airbnb has to make a trade off here. They prefer to see that you're hundred percent booked as opposed to having like a high conversion percentage. So that is a myth as far as what's most important, but let's get on to number four. Number four is reviews. See, there's this back end loop that Airbnb checks on to make sure that your guests actually liked their stay because you could perform really well on the front end, beautiful space, your copywriting is good. All the stuff that we'll talk about here, it goes well, but then after a guest stays, they weren't happy. They weren't satisfied. You didn't run a good business and your negative reviews or your sub optimal reviews, Airbnb will say, well, Hey, this is kind of a liability. We like that. It's good on the front end when people scroll, that's cool and all, but people aren't enjoying it. And when people don't enjoy their stays, they're less likely to rebook on Airbnb. So this negative feedback loop causes you to get pushed down in rankings, even though on the front end you did everything right. You still have to run a good business. Here's how we hack this. In a future video, I'm going to talk to you about something called booking inertia, super brainy stuff. But in this video, I'm just going to give you what you need to do to accomplish your goals here without getting into the deep why kind of topics that I typically tend to like go rant on. We're just going to stick to the goods here. Step one, you need to clickbait people. Now I know that sounds a little illicit, but trust me, clickbait isn't all bad. You have good offering, you need to find a creative way to market it. And what clickbait does is it generates curiosity and curiosity generates clicks. Now your title and your thumbnail will be the two most important parts of generating this curiosity. And one of my favorite things to do is choosing your thumbnail photo, otherwise known as the hero photo on Airbnb. You want to click 
Uh, you want to choose a photo that encourages somebody to see the bigger version of it, right? So you can have a beautiful photo, but like, wow, that's super pretty. But you should always have a detail in that shot that people want to see that thing close up. For example, you could have something in your shot that actually has text in it. You could say like a, like a piece of artwork that has some text, but because it's so small, they can't quite read what it says and they just have to know what that thing says. That's a fun one. You can use colors, like little accents of red. Like what's a red in that photo? Because when it's small, they don't know if it's an apple sitting on a countertop or something else. So they'll actually click to enlarge things that just seem too pixelated and small from far away. The title, I don't typically use clickbaity call to actions like check this space out or anything like that, but I will say some things like, you know, king bed. I'll always put a king bed in my space and I'll write that as a king bed suite. Um, with you know fast Wi-Fi and things. I try to put a bunch of benefits in the title instead of saying like check this out you won't believe this like we're not trying to get somebody to click on an article so you don't do the cliche clickbait bait, like call to actions in the title but you should list things that people go oh I want a place with that stuff right so the title is really great for that king bed suite uh, free parking and fast Wi-Fi are great ways to, to put your like stuff in the title that people can see some key benefits that they go, oh, I'll, that's great, free parking, let me click on that. And now it's important that you focus on competitive amenities when you do list out that description or that title because if everybody offers free parking in the neighborhood, then putting free parking isn't really special. But if you have a gym and no one else has a gym, then you should be putting that you have a gym in your title, right? Competitive or more rare amenities go great in the title. And of course, I always list King Bed, for example, because there's no search toggle for King Bed on Airbnb still. Can't believe it, but they still don't allow you to search like that. So you have to put it in the title if you want people to, to know, because you're taking a photo of a bed doesn't say, oh, this is a king right? <laughs> That's kind of hard to do through photos. Step two is to engineer occupancy. Now, I mean like the total number of guests that you can sleep. We have studio apartments that, you know, can sleep with a king bed and then there's like a sleeper sofa or just a really comfy couch and that's like three. But then we put a rollaway bed and that makes it four, like one of those smile back rollaway beds or with a sleeper sofa, that's five. We don't expect people to try to cram five into a space. Those rollaway beds are great for like if people have kids and stuff, that's typically what they get used for. Like if there's, you know, small children that, you know, they want to give them a bed, they pop this rollaway bed out. You're not going to have five guys go book a studio that can sleep five if one's a couch one, and two are rollaway beds and one's a king bed. Even though you're advertising that you can sleep five, you tend to not get those size groups anyway. But what it does for you is it makes you pop up more in searches. When a group of four or five is looking for a place, your listing will pop up even though it's really optimal to sleep three and people will still click on your space because your price point's probably you know competitive compared to the larger listings that can easily sleep them. So you get curiosity just in general and you get these clicks. So engineering your guest count actually helps you get more views. This actually helps when you get into larger listings. Let's say you've got a listing that really comfortably sleeps 10, but you've made it so it can sleep 12 or 13. Now in that case, you might get a group that doesn't really have the option of any other good property because when there's larger properties, there's less inventory available at the, at the larger sizes. So if you've got a good property with like good reviews and stuff, and somebody's got to sleep on a on a like on a rollaway bed, but it's their best option, even considering the roller rollaway bed, you probably still will get a booking from a group that maxes out at 13, even though you comfortably sleep 10, because everything else that sleeps 13 is either way overpriced or just is a trash listing. In the upper levels, this actually works for collecting more money on your listing because if you can sleep 13, you will make more money than if you can sleep 10. In-platform searchability becomes the next most important thing for getting views, which of course is generating that interest algorithm to kick up. There's something kind of nerdy I can teach you here. It's called a Boolean search, um, B-O-O-L-E-A-N. Essentially, it's an all or nothing search. So when somebody's looking for a place, they're like, I wanna be available the six days. Well, if you're not available all six days, of course, they're not gonna show your listing. You can't host them. But there's other things, like they want something that's pet friendly, uh, with a gym and free parking and they click all those boxes. You might be available those six days, but you don't meet their requirements for free parking pet friendly, you're not gonna get shown. And this matters for every little checkbox that they choose. So if somebody wants an on-site washer and dryer, you may have one, but you've selected washer and dryer, but you didn't select it as an on-site washer and dryer now. Cause Airbnb has actually added all these extra little mini boxes um, in their amenities section, like all the weirdest stuff. They wanna know if you have the, the kitchen stuff. So you may have kitchen utensils and, and everything you need to cook with, but you haven't gone and updated your listing to check that box that you have a full kitchen, right? So if somebody clicks kitchen, you might get taken out of search even though you qualify for that person because you haven't updated all those little checkboxes. So go back through your listing and make sure that every single imaginable amenity that you offer is selected. Another thing that helps you get more views is to get rid of your minimum night stay and instead offset that with pricing. Now, to really understand
science of this, go back and watch my pricing strategy video, the most recent one that I've done, so you can understand how to offset your risks and take advantage of uh, custom length of stay discounts to do this. But for the sake of this video, without getting too brainy, if you have a three-day minimum, right, and you make it so that way people can't search you for one or two days, you're just not gonna pop up in a lot of searches, right? And this is actually gonna take your view count down, which then pushes your ranking down, which is no fun. But if you have a one night minimum where the place is way too expensive and people are not going to book it because you doubled the price for a single night stay, you still pop up in single night searches, right? Which still gives you the chance of getting a view when, when people see your listings, they, they think that your image is awesome and your title is awesome, they click it just to see what your expensive place looks like. Right, so you can do a good job of marketing your place, but overcharge, and then people won't book it, but you still get the hang time and the view count, which is, which is super important. So go watch pricing strategy videos on how to use custom length of stay discounts so you can double your one night stay and then give a discount for two or three nights or something if that's something you wanna to try to do. Step four, let's look at your copywriting, your storytelling ability and your ability to write everything out in your description. Now, truth of the matter is six out of 10 guests, the first thing that they do is they flip through photos. We're about to cover this here next, but then people who don't just flip through photos automatically, they will scroll down, scroll down in your listing and look at your listing and read it. So some best practices for copywriting is you should storytell when you write. You should speak in a way that allows somebody to kind of like imagine that they are going to be booking your space. Um, when you arrive, you will find this and um, you'll experience blank or blank. Don't say this listing has this, this listing has this, this listing has this. Use the words like you will experience and you will see and you will feel, right? You were, talk we're talking about sensory inputs here and using the word you to really speak to the customer that's reading your stuff. That's enough that I think you need to know in this video about storytelling best practices because that'll cause people to continue to read, which will increase their hang time and it might actually increase your conversion because people are like, you know what, I like this, this sounds good, I'm gonna book it. So this drives up bookings as well as your hang time. Now that means you also need to clean up the way that you write your sentences. You need to make sure you have good grammar, you don't have all these run-on sentences where you use a bunch of like really junky filler words and you just have one big block paragraph that's like 2,000 words and that's the whole description. It's just one big block of a paragraph. You need to clean that up. Um, there are ways that people tend to read and view things. So spacing out your copywriting, I think there's something called the F pattern with the way that people read and then there's also the Z pattern, which is more for graphics. But if you understand how people tend to read and skip down and read and skip down, you can create spacings to make sure that you accentuate certain key things that you want people to know without like overwhelming them with this big forest of verbiage. And in your description, you should be including like your amenities and your benefits and do it in a bullet point format. I like to say included with this space, colon, and then down below I'll say free parking, fast Wi-Fi, smart TV with Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you know, HBO Max, coffee with decaf and tea, and I just bullet point every single, every single thing out that I think somebody will enjoy. And doing it in a bullet point format helps you make what looks like to be a big stack of amenities and benefits that are awesome. Because a lot of people don't ever click that amenities button tab thing when they search through a listing. Airbnb does offer this like graphic where you can click on amenities and it'll map it all out, but people don't tend to interact with that button. So, but they will read the description. So if you bullet point out and make a whole big stack of like all the amenities in your description, that really helps push the sale. And then calls to action. You should have multiple calls to action within your copywriting where you say, book this place. You really actually literally say, book this place. Um, come stay with us, we'll be happy to have you. And you can even embed it when you stay here. Like you, you can say soft things like that too, but you need to create calls to action where people think in their brain, I'm gonna book this place. And you can really influence that in the way that you do your copywriting. So don't just describe your place, but include you know, assumptive sentences like that when you wake up. That's part of your storytelling, but then include those call to actions like book today, you know, kind of stuff. Step five, you need to glam up that listing and that's largely done with the photos. What one thing is that causes people not to book, and this will go in the booking inertia video, is you can have too many photos or too many similar photos that'll cause people to not book. Or you can take photos of things that you think are important, but the photo just doesn't look good. See, there's a concept of overselling here that you have to be careful for. Um, if you can take a photo of your washer and dryer, but your washer and dryer is like old and kind of looks janky and you don't have good lighting in that area and you just take this photo that just kind of looks dark and weird, it doesn't fit with your whole photo reel. Don't put that in there. Um, don't take a photo of your pots and pans underneath the cabinets with the doors open. That, does, that doesn't really fit, does it? And that photo is gonna be hard to get good lighting. It's gonna look cluttered down there, so don't do that either. Instead, stage your home. Put the pots and pans on the stove, put a cut board out, put a knife on the cutting board, um, stage your coffee station so they can see the coffee and the decaf and the tea. You put that whole thing in playhouse there. Set your table with plates, cups, bowls, wine glasses, you know, put a bottle of wine on the photo and just, you know, even use placemats and stuff. 
set the whole place as if somebody's ready to like stay in it and then have the photos taken. You don't have to take them yourself. You can have a professional do it, but if you do take them yourself, use HDR, do bracketing photos, and I have a photography masterclass video. You can go back and watch that. You just wanna make sure that your photos are nice and bright um, and welcoming, very much like, like home and garden kind of style, um, which of course, let me just show you some photos as we're talking about this of photos that look great. Money shots are going to be like wonderful photos that could all be your hero photo, could all be your thumbnail photo. You want five thumbnail worthy photos and they become the first five photos. The reason why is when somebody's on desktop, they see one photo, they click on you, they open up your, like they open up your listing and boom, you're on the desktop. Now five photos are showing, the first one that they saw, but then they see four more to the right. Now, if they don't go flip through your photo reel and start to read the description and go up and go down and just forget to click on your photo reel, you want those five photos to do a sufficient job of selling your space. They need to be five diverse photos of all the stuff that's wonderful about your property. So let's say you have a four bedroom house with this big living room that's got like two stories and stuff. You, that's one great photo. Let's say you've got a kitchen with an island and like all the pots and pans anybody would, would ever need. You need a glamour shot of the kitchen. Let's say your backyard is done up where you got like a gazebo and everything looks good. Do a twilight hour shot. And twilight hour is where the sun is low enough, where it's like gone, that you can see the stars, but there's still enough ambient light that you can get a good like, dip, like picture of the house or the backyard. Twilight photos are probably the best performing photos for selling houses when you put them on the market, so you might as well get a twilight photo outside if you're gonna put it on your short-term rental. Other ones that you could put are like competitive amenities, if you got one of a hot tub, if you got one with your gym, um, you could do nearby attractions. If you don't have enough photos of say like your studio apartment, for example, um, you can go do nearby attractions. So if you're in Philadelphia and you've got a studio apartment that's near the Rocky Steps, well then do some photos of your space, but on the first five photos, right, you're still gonna put like, here's the king bed, it looks so awesome. Here's our kitchen and stuff, so awesome. Here's the Rocky Steps, so awesome, right? You can put stuff that's not inside your literal listing as one of those um, diverse photos that makes people like what they see. Now by using these techniques, you're gonna get more clicks on your listing and you get people hanging out on your listing, reading the great stories that you're telling and flipping through all your fun photos and really enjoying your listing, which is cool, which means they might even wish list it or share it, which those things ha happen to have an effect too. But even more importantly, the, the way that you did not oversell your listing by not having too many photos and, and having good calls to action in your listing, you're gonna get those conversions, you're gonna get people booking. Now all of that will feed back into the front end and Airbnb will go, people are interested, this is going well, right? And that is even before you even get one review. Like you can have 10 days, 12 days of positive feedback before you even get your first review on Airbnb. And this will push your listing up and up and up in the rankings. Now the only thing I have to put on your shoulders now is to make sure you do get the good review. Be a good host, be good to your guests, care about them and serve them well, and you'll get the five star reviews. Now if you wanna learn more about how to Airbnb, including how to be a good host, this YouTube channel has everything you need to know. Every single topic you've ever wanted to know about how to run an Airbnb business is right here, including what kind of messages to send guests, things that guests care about, amenities that they will like, products that you should leave out there that they'll use, how to handle weird situations, like even if a guest doesn't check out on time, like how to handle that kind of stuff. So again, please like this video and in the comments, leave me a question or a request for another video. I'll be here for you. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the other side.